Good morning. Uh, welcome to Bringing Back the Ball, Episode 1. Uh, my name is Ember Fricks, and I'll be your hostess uh, for today. So, what this little episode is about is about bringing back and the evolution of the Heathen's Masquerade Ball. Um, as you know, back in 2020, right before COVID hit, uh, we, I started doing the Masquerade, and it was just called The Masquerade, and it started out at Paper Moon, and initially, initially it was supposed to be for Michelle and I's wedding. Uh, the idea was that we'd be these vampires on a, like, chair, you know, like thrones, and we'd have, like, the party around us, right? And then in the middle of it, we'd get up and get married. And we wouldn't tell anybody. It would just be, like, this big party. Um, and I was working at FedEx at the time, and we were living in Belton, and I was just really starting to get into, like, the art scene. Like, I was just really starting to, like, get my like learning the ropes still and uh so i started i started amassing props and luckily the warehouse theater was around at the time and they uh, they helped me out a lot like there was this they handed me this really large prop that was like an oval stretched canvas it was painted to look like a mirror but i repainted it as a large eight foot by four foot painting of michelle and i and that was like a big staple of like the look, you know, very gothic, um, very ornate, almost Adam Stanley. And I had gotten like a golden cherub as well from them um, that sort of always sits on the stage. And then I bought all these lamps and I had ripped out all the guts and painted them up to look like these candelabras. And I you know, would stick like LED candles to them. And I bought probably $200 worth of LED candles. Um, and some red fabric for like a, a, a runway sort of thing. Anyway, so it, by the end of it, we had kind of decided to go a different way with the theme of our wedding, but I still had all these props. So we, we were initially going to host it at the firmament, but we decided... Well, actually, no, we didn't decide. They, they just flaked out. This was the beginning of the downfall of that venue. So they just never really got back to us. So we approached Paper Moon, and we were going to do the first masquerade as a fundraiser to help out with said wedding, to help fund the theme that we wanted. And uh, it, was a, it was a blast. You know, we had Tisa Costello, and we had Dragonborn, so there was fire, there was music, there was dancing, and it was very aesthetically pleasing, and it was great. It was a little small, but it was good. You know, it was a it was a learning process, and it was something new. After that, we started doing radio room, and even though Michelle and I had broken up, I just wanted to continue doing it, I guess. And there's a lot to that. You know, I'd always invite her, and she'd always come out and dance, and. Uh, I feel like there was a time that I really kept it alive for her. And I'm okay with admitting that, you know, almost like a Gatsby-ish thing. And that's, you know, whatever, that's what it was. And they kind of, they grew over time. They became their own thing, especially once we got the radio room, I started developing a formula. And I think we hosted the, uh, two and three there. And then four, we tried a different venue at Barn House, which was really cool because I was able to um, hang all these things from the ceiling. So we had like this big death sack thing, which is like a, a metal cage with all these wires and stuff hanging off of it. I made a 10 foot dream catcher. Like it was just pretty, pretty out there, pretty bizarre. Um, and I had people climbing on these things. It was, it was a bunch of you know, grander show, which, you know, and, and the, the formatting forced me to really have acts, you know, boom, 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 because of the way, um, because of the way there was no backstage, I really had to 
throw people up every five minutes on the dot. Whereas as, you know, in radio room, you had time to kind of like play with, you know, when people went on, but not at Barnhouse. And I took that with me when I, um, when I went back to radio room. And uh, that would have been in February of 2022 when I finally came back to radio room. And, um, and it took, that doesn't sound like a lot, you know, cause that's what, three years and we only did five shows and that's COVID played a big part in that I, I was going to do one every three or four months and uh, those two and three kept getting pushed out further and further uh, because of COVID and things like that so we, we had a hard time to say the least but uh, five five I officially rebranded it from the masquerade to the Heathen's Masquerade Ball, with the intention of dropping the Masquerade from and just being the Heathen's Ball. Um, and I took all that I learned from those previous four shows and really put it in to that fifth show. And I had developed this brand new uh, logo and sort of like, um, I had made sort of tarot style cards for all the people that had performed with us. So you could have like, you know, a Catherine Arcana card, or a, a uh, an Ember card, or a Grey card, you know, or a Sherry card, and it would say, like, what they did in the show, or what they, like, their skill lists, you know, like, almost like their powers, um, and I would sell those, and I wanted to comprise a full deck, and I, I never quite was able to uh, do a box, but I, I'd revisit it again. Anyway, so it grew into this own thing, you know, it, it's, the format was a variety hour where you'd have drag or like contortion or grinding wheels and just all these different circus and sideshow acts alongside, um, you know, vending. And while that was going on, if you didn't want to do that outside, there was foam fighting right so you could like duel it out you know and once the variety hour was over we would put on bands you know we start off with like wasted wine and then we'd go to like um hypno cat right to kind of end out the night and that kind of worked because as the people that were there for wasted wine were kind of like dying down and started to leave hypno cat would bring them back up and they'd bring their own kind of crowd so it was like you know, energized all over again. It was a really cool flow to things. And um, while the music started inside, fire performing started outside. Um, so it was like this really fine-tuned formula of no matter where you were in this venue, there was something for you to do. There was something for you to look at, something to entertain you. And the props that I had made only got better, you know. Even... Uh, mannequins that were like uh with flowers and just very it, the whole thing was like so aesthetic the last show we did had these giant trees uh paper mache trees with lights in them so it's like completely transforming the space that we were in um and then that 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 was in february 2022 was the fifth ball and if you've been paying attention to my channel or not i don't know but Right around March of 2022, uh, life got very hard for me, and a lot of things fell apart, and it became very difficult for me to do shows, and a lot of my performers left, and I started going through a divorce. And it took me a lot of time to come back from that, and I lost almost everything. Um, I lost my studio space and with it I lost all my props and that was the case because a previously <laughs> I had a studio space at a, at a local studio and I had my great-grandmother's house uh, workshop and I had I, I had this full workshop at my great-grandmother's and that's where I would fabricate and store all of the masquerade uh, props, but my great-grandmother uh, 
passed away in 2018, along with my great-grandfather, and my grandmother had inherited it, and she sold the house early in 2022. So I lost that workshop, and all the props had to come to the local art studio. And when I lost that space because of what was going on in my life, I lost all of the props almost. Uh, I think probably, yeah, like 97% of all the props I lost. Um, and for a while I thought I was going to be done. Um, and slowly I started to rebuild. And I really started thinking about what I wanted to rebuild it to. You know, I had a lot of time to build it better. So, backtracking a little bit, back in 2020, when I first kind of launched Ember Frick Studio as like, you know, a proper entity, I, um, I started doing a lot of different, um, a lot of different kinds of things. So, you know, a lot of different kinds of events all at once. So, I started doing uh, the Unknown Market, and then I started doing the Bohemian Market, which was pretty much the same thing as the Unknown Market, but it was abroad. So, I started at the Spinning Jenny, and we had, like, roughly 30 vendors, although I think only 20 showed up, which is kind of like my curse, I think. That always happens. And, um, so... And then that's, you know, the masquerade started to get bigger, and uh, I forgot why I was saying that. Oh, a part of that was also starting a circus, and it was called the Onerianos, and, or Onerianos, which is Greek for dreamwalker, and I wanted to do sort of a circus Olay thing where there would be all these circus acts, but they'd be linked together by a singular story. And the, it was built around dreams. So the idea was is that you'd be going through these, these dreams and that, that you'd be a dream walker, so you'd be in an area not. And unfortunately, the circus didn't really take off very well because there's a, there's a lot of liability in that and we were having trouble like legalities uh, with the company and what really stopped it was I didn't have the funds at the time to fund the production of props fast enough for um, people to start practicing. Because we held practices. I recorded audio. I just didn't have... Uh, I just couldn't keep up fast enough. And the story itself kept getting rewritten. Uh, first, it was fully dialogue. Everyone had a line, you know, and we uh, were having trouble ending it. And I brought, I brought Gray and Sherry in to help me write it. And what we produced was this really complicated story that I thought would have such a high budget it'd be really hard to do. And the story was convoluted. So then I asked Sherry to rewrite it and she did, and it was very comedic, and it had an ending, and I, I enjoyed it, but we, we struggled with, still, with it being so grandiose, I thought it'd be hard to do on a first outing, and then we ran into the problem that all the actors were, they didn't want to say dialogue, so that was a problem, and we ended up rewriting it several times, and Sherry kind of quit after a minute because she didn't want, she wanted her script to be used, which anybody would, and I understand her frustration in that, but I couldn't use it because nobody wanted to do dialogue, and if I don't have my performers, I don't have anyone. So, I eventually toyed with the idea for another two years, almost, and eventually, in December of 2021, when I was recovering from surgery and had pneumonia, I <laughs> rewrote the whole thing again 
less complex, no dialogue. The compromise there was that there would be voiceovers. And I wrote it in such a way that it could be modular. So there's a beginning, a middle, and an end, and all the acts that came in between those things, if somebody dropped out, you could delete it and close the rank, make it a shorter show, but you wouldn't be losing anything. And I designed rigs and things that would hold uh, silks and things, and actors, performers, and then I built rigs that would hold backdrops. And I went as far as to plan out how much these things would cost, and I went to uh, the store and priced out every bit of lumber and every bit of metal and every screw that I would need to make this thing. And the grand total, I think, if I bought everything new, every prop, everything, would be like 10 grand. Um, but if you did it the way I wanted to do it, um, you could take it anywhere. You could set up in a parking lot, you could set up in a field, and you'd have your stage. Um, so it was really cool. And I thought after the fifth ball, I would take my time and really do that, because I in my mind they were connected and i i don't know why they were connected i just thought it would be so i i guess i figured since there would be a a, a a variety hour at the beginning of every ball why not make it a play at the beginning of every ball and it wasn't until much later that i started realizing that maybe that's not necessary and it, it like is is as recent as this month which is november of 2022 am i really just now thinking about Maybe I don't really need to make them connected. It'd be so much better if the masquerade was its own thing and it doesn't need a story or even just maybe a loose theme. Make the play its own thing and make it big. And I could maybe still do it as a ball, but we'll get into that later. So anyway, I was in a position where I could start rebuilding these things and I wanted to do it bigger and better. So I started making new candelabras out of rebar and I started uh, buying plywood and making cutouts of giant uh, moons and comedy tragedy masks that were like ripping away from each other and they all held TVs and you know they uh, they would all share the same display displaying like ads and stuff for the ball right and i'm still working on that right now i'm building a 12 foot dream catcher and um i'm still setting up the computer for the tv display so they all link together um so yeah i mean like it's it's been a almost a year-long process uh now the cool news is um, I, I finally have a lead on the play. There's, I'm just gonna say, two local theaters that are interested in potentially doing my play. And I'll know in January of 2023 whether or not one theater is interested in doing it. And I'll probably know by about February or so if the other one's interested in doing it. Um, and so I've started to like make my dream catcher again and it's huge it went from 10 feet or so to or maybe 8 to 10 feet to about 12 or 13 feet and it's much more intricate um and i'm gonna make it glow in the black light like but i'm, I'm starting to see like these two projects the masquerade heathen's ball and the play need to be very separate so i'm probably going to rewrite that play or i'm rename it at least but right now the way the ball would work is pretty much the same but maybe a loose theme and then the play you'd start off with the play and then afterwards you would have sort of a ball so i mean that's two two good ideas that started as one or started as two became one became two again and uh so right so yeah right now everything is in you know my li my living room what i've built uh and as i finish them they go off to storage and that's a whole oh my gosh like when i lost the studio space everything that i didn't lose got shoved into a crumpled broken building and 
rained on and pillaged. I was told that it would be kept, like, it'd be fine there to store it until I could come and get it, and things started miss going missing. People were telling people that things could be taken out of that pile, um, and a lot of my stuff got rained on. But what I was able to salvage were, like, the big trees and maybe, like, a tip jar, and the first place, oh, and the death sack, and the first thing those things went to were Janet's backyard and Janet's warehouse, because she had a warehouse at the time. And that warehouse didn't last forever because things change. And it went from there to also Janet's backyard. And then the rest of it went to storage. I had to buy a storage building on the 4th of July. And it was so far away <laughs> from anything. Um, and it was so expensive. And eventually I moved it from that storage building all the way into my house. So my whole living room was nothing but props. And eventually, finally, I put it in a new storage building, which is a lot closer to me and about $50 cheaper. Uh, and now that's becoming problematic because it's just not big enough to hold everything as I'm building these things. So I'm probably about to have to upgrade to a, probably a 10 by 15 at the bare minimum, and that's like 170, I think, a month. So it's 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 costing me monthly 90 to 100 and so dollars, you know, almost 200 dollars probably to hold all this stuff as I'm building it, and it's it's been a really difficult year because like I've been losing props and having to remake props, and where I'm keeping those props gets moved around every which way to different locations, and it's like always like this constant like, oh my god, like. You know what's going on uh where's it going it's a crisis it's, it's, it's been a crisis this whole year it's just now starting to kind of level out um and we're looking into venues for the next masquerade heathens ball and i'm starting to look for cardboard to um paint backdrops and like set pieces for the the the, the play so I don't know. I don't know if the play is going to be the future of the ball or if they're going to be separate, but I've been amassing these props. And uh, yeah, it's been a heck of a year. So much has happened to stop me. And at this point, you know, I'm doing it because I love doing it. I'm doing it because I love the masquerade, uh, the heathen's ball. You know, I'm doing it because it brings something to people. You know, it, it, and it's fun, and it's fun for the people that are doing it. It's fun, it gives the performers or local performers a place to show what they do. And, you know, if it evolves into a story, then that's even, that's even cooler, you know. Um, I do have plans to write a sequel to the play. So, the other big uh, development in all of this has been the fact that I did gain a business partner uh, to work with me on events, but a stipulation of that is that it's no longer just Imperfect Studio. So we started a new endeavor, and this is something I've been thinking about for a few years. Um, separating out the different types of events and stuff. So I thought about, like a year or two ago, I thought about calling something like this uh, the City Lights Collaborative, which is the name of my favorite Charlie Chaplin movie. And it's, um, it's, it's about a man falling in love with a blind girl. And, uh, Anyway, so, but I, I like it more because it's, in City Lights Collaborative, it's, it's about artists and performers and musicians and all, you know, all these different people coming together to light up the city. You know, like, we are the lights of the city. We are the City Lights Collaborative. Um, so... I have a business partner and she's working with me under that banner. So now if I paint something, it's only under Imperfect Studio. It's 
like sculpt something, it's under that. But if I do an event like the market or the masquerade or whatever, the play, it's under city lights. And it's, it's interesting because we're trying to start that up right now. There's where I'm doing a lot of advertising, building a new page, new email, new square, all the cash app, all that crap. I'm having to build into this one thing and separate them and gain a following on this page and still maintain my own. And it's just, it's, I'm wearing many different hats for many different companies at this point, which is fun, I guess. And I think it's a little more marketable. But uh, yeah, the next Masquerade and the play will all be under City Lights. City Lights Collaborative. Um, and the structure, you know, my first event back since February when everything happened was the third Saturday art market at the barn house. I had had a contract with them to have a monthly market uh, from January through the whole year. And because of everything that happened in March, I had to step down and I knew I was coming back, but I didn't know exactly when. And someone sort of tried to get between me and that. And I, it scared me and I went ahead and got my stuff in gear. And I, wanna, I went ahead and like, you know, got my show back together. And, the, and that's good and I don't think we're going to be doing it every month uh, I think we're going to stay with three or four months because of all the other things I have going on in my life and that's fine um, so we're no longer calling it the third Saturday art market we're calling it the art market at barn house yeah. city lights presents the art market at barn house and our first one was October 15th 2022 we're doing another one this month on November 26th, and then we're going to take a break until warmer weather, maybe April, March, or May. Um, but the idea is that with new management, new advertising, a new team, a new approach, a better improved approach to doing events, um, we'll not only build a better show that's better for the people involved in the community, and newcomers and, and veteran artists and you know uh, customers alike but we'll also it'll be able to you know the pro the company profits from that will be going towards helping build a a better market but also towards building a better masquerade and so the market builds the masquerade and the masquerade and the market build queer aid and the masquerade the market and the queer aid build play at least that's the initial plan but as long as it as long as there's a system where they pay help pay for each other it doesn't have to be in that order necessarily I don't know when we're gonna be able to do the queer aid at this point because I haven't had the funds to do that it's so many different props and they're all separate from what we normally do and they're all expensive I want just a, a copious amount of black lights fog machines, pride flags, video game consoles that are all retro and expensive. There's just a lot going into that. And I really wanted to do it during Pride Month of this coming year, but I just, unless something dramatic happens that gives us a lot of money, I don't know if I'll be able to afford that because I think it's like $5,000 worth of props if I buy it all new. And I'm not saying I will buy it all new, but if I did, then I just don't have that kind of funding right now. Um, but yeah. It's, it's really exciting because the last market we did was really nice and big and everybody was very happy with it. So I'm hoping that we bring that in.
Very valid thing that I just thought of. If I snap the one that it's on now, there's no coming back. I don't know how I did this, but it's so much fun. <laughs> Bitches, he said. Yeah. What? Like 
my affliction Well, it comes and goes I need direction to protection No, 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 no Call me out Yeah, yeah Don't just put me on the back Call me out Yeah, yeah Don't just put me on the back burner So in preparation for the next season's ball, I went ahead and got more of these. Two as a matter of fact, so now I can definitely have working pairs of chandelier light-up earrings for the ball. And my dress and mask should be coming in today. Okay, so I just got in my costume for the next ball. I don't know if this is going to be for December, or if we're going to hold out to June. And I don't know what venue we're at, but God damn it, I have my mask. I love it. It's the first truly masquerade-like thing we've done here. Shout out to these guys. Thank you so much.